Hola cleaning family, it's your cleaning business mentor, Carolyn Arellano here with some more gems for your cleaning business. Now, when I first started my company, one of my main concerns was how to price. Just as many of you have either gone through the situation or are currently wondering, right? How do I price? Am I pricing properly? Am I underbidding? Am I overcharging? And in this video, we're gonna get into how to determine what your billable rate should be and the different types of pricing structures. So first and foremost, I wanna get into the aspect of hourly rate, right? So every cleaning company has an hourly rate or a billable rate per hour, meaning how much you're going to be charging per technician to your client. Now to figure that out, let's just get that out the way. That's step number one. How do we find out what our billable rate is? My answer is going to be to do your due diligence. And what I mean by that is it's going to take a little bit of research from you. Okay, this might take you a total of maybe an hour and a half, maybe even less if you're tech savvy and are determined to get this done. <laughs> so what I suggest is opening up a Google Sheet or if you're old school, go ahead and get that pen and paper out and start making a list of cleaning businesses within your area. Now, across every state, you know, just from talking to cleaning business owners all day long, I know that we have different rates. So I live in New York, I operate out of New Jersey, the pricing per hour is pretty similar, but it might be very, very different for somebody out in Nebraska or Oklahoma or even Hawaii, right? So be sure to open up that spreadsheet or notebook and write down about 10 to 20 cleaning businesses, legitimate cleaning businesses within your area. Now we want to avoid looking at pricing or getting pricing from quote unquote cleaning ladies, right? So we cannot compare ourselves, number one, you guys, to cleaning ladies, meaning those that do not have an actual company that clean on the side for themselves, don't report it to the government, and never have any aspirations of scaling their business, right? So you cannot compare yourself to somebody that is just doing this to get by and pay their bills because they have no vision of scaling this business, and that's totally fine if that's how you wanna operate, then this is, you know, this video is not for you, but if you wanna scale your business, if you wanna grow your business, if you wanna get out of cleaning, right, which is the ultimate goal, you are going to have to be profitable. So do your due diligence, call these cleaning companies after you make your list. Again, legitimate cleaning companies. Some of them might even have online booking forms. And if they do, you can actually toggle and play around with their pricing, but you're still gonna to wanna to call in. And this is why. You want to know what their hourly rate is, okay? Call these cleaning companies and ask questions. And here are some of the questions that you should be asking. And write this down, definitely take notes, right? Also, don't worry about having to provide an actual physical address. I'm telling you from my own experience, not everybody gives me their address when they want to quote or gives the office their address when they want to quote. And that's totally fine. There are plenty of questions and plenty of things that we can do to decide on how to get a ballpark pricing. So don't worry about not giving them an address. You can just tell them you don't feel comfortable or you'll provide it, you know, if you decide to book. So you call your first cleaning company and you're gonna wanna say something along the lines of, hey, I'm just checking out or I'm inquiring about getting a quote or receiving a quote from you. I own a home. Let's say you wanna just start off with homes. I want, I own a home and I wanna know how much it would be for a one-time deep cleaning. And they're gonna say, okay, cool, one-time deep cleaning, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms? So, and this is why you're gonna have to call multiple companies, right? So let's just start off with one bed, one bath. You can say, I have a one bedroom, one bathroom home or and our apartment. How about how much is that gonna cost me? And they'll give you a ballpark. And you could say, okay, how much is that per hour if you don't mind sharing? And they will tell you what their hourly rate is. And if they say, oh, we don't have an hourly rate, then you can say, okay, well, how many technicians will be coming to my home and how long should it take them? Because then you can reverse the math, right? For example, if they say, it's going to take one technician two hours, this is an example, to clean your home and the price is $200. So then you know that 200 divided by two is $100 per hour. So if they say they don't have an hourly rate, you can reverse the math in that sense. But you can you know, straight up ask, well, what's your hourly rate? Do you have a minimum? Many companies have minimum, including myself, and we'll talk about that later. But do you have a minimum 
Okay. How much would it be to add on the inside of the refrigerator? How much would it be to add on the inside of the oven? How much would it be to add on the exterior of the cabinets? You know, what if I have pets? So you can ask all these questions and get as much information as possible. And then, you know, say, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll be giving a call back, reaching out, call the next company. Now you're going to ask, you know, for a two bed, two bath, what the pricing would be for a deep cleaning, the inside oven, inside fridge. You know, you can say, what if I have a finished basement? How much for the basement? You know, what if I have pets? What if I have two refrigerators? Cause then you can figure out, you know, how much your pricing per refrigerator is and whatnot. But ultimately what you want to find out is what is the price for these different bedroom and bathroom setups? Ask about the additionals, the pets, the windows, just all these things that you would be needing to have pricing on and gather that information. And then again, if they don't want to share that hourly rate with you, ask them about how long this cleaning should take with X amount of technicians again, cause then you can reverse the math. I'll tell you what, a lot of cleaning companies do this. There is no wrong way to go about it. This isn't like stealing information. This is generally just inquiring for info. This is information. This is free information. So don't feel like you're being like weird or shady by doing this. I know other cleaning companies call me up and try to ask for pricing. And honestly, if they just straight up ask, I would share it with them. So it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I'm making this video, right? <laughs> so the more information that we can give one another, the more that we're helping each other. There's enough business for everybody, but let's get back on track with the pricing. So once you call about 10 to 20 different cleaning companies and you figure out that hourly rate, you can decide where you feel comfortable with pricing, right? I would probably add those all up and, you know, divide it out by however X amount of companies you've called and find a medium, like literally add them all up and then divide by how many companies you spoke to. And then you can actually find that medium, or you can just do a comparison. You can say, okay, well, these five cleaning companies are charging $70 a man an hour right now. And these other five companies were about between 55 to $60 a man hour, let's just say, and I'm just starting out. So I'm going to be a little bit competitive. Let me price myself out at about 55 on the low end or something of that of that sort but you know starting out you can short change yourself a little bit i don't want to say completely short change yourself but i do understand that we all want to get the job experience so we can price ourselves out low when we first started our cleaning business five years ago that's what i did right so i noticed that my big competitors in my area were at $60 a man hour and this was five years ago and a couple of other competitors they were not as large they were pricing out at I think $55 a man hour. So I went ahead and started pricing at $45 a man hour. Now for me, that was profitable because I figured I'm going to be paying my cleaners about anywhere from, you know, 17 to $20 an hour. That leaves me with about $25 an hour on top of my payroll expenses. And then, you know, I did the math for my supplies and my overhead, which wasn't much because we were working out, out of our home at the time and we were doing the cleaning ourselves. So I was like, okay, you know, everything was pure profit in the beginning because we were the ones doing the cleaning, my sister and I, and putting it back into our business and investing. But you still wanna be profitable, right? And maybe you don't wanna clean at all. Maybe you don't intend to clean, which is totally fine. And you're gonna hire right away. So do your due diligence, come up with that number and be firm with that. It has to make sense, you guys. It has to be profitable for you. So with that being said, now you have your billable rate or your hourly rate, right? As we call it. Next thing is you're going to wanna to try to find out how long each clean is going to take you. Now, when we're just beginning, it's gonna be very hard to figure that out on your own, right? You can only learn that through experience. And I totally suggest writing down every type of clean and exactly how long it took you. You can even break it down by room, meaning, okay, you know, these bathrooms are taking me typically 45 minutes to an hour. So now you know that when you're pricing out a home, you should probably go about an hour per bathroom based on your experience and how long it takes you to clean because we all clean differently and at different paces. Same thing with the bedrooms, the kitchens, time yourself doing an inside of a refrigerator and inside of an oven. And then you have a kind of idea of 
how long your cleans will take. And I'll actually share some clean times with you guys right now. Now my clean times are based on including the inside of the windows, high dusting and baseboard. So my company, we only offer deep cleanings. We don't really do standards unless it's a recurring client. So for a typical deep cleaning of a one bedroom, one bathroom, no extras, that normally takes us about three man hours. Again, that's like windows included, high dusting, baseboards, and wet wiping the baseboards. So one bed, one bath is usually about three man hours. A two bed, two bath is normally about four man hours. A three bed, three bath is six man hours, a four bed, four bath, eight man hours. And if you can see after the one bed, one bath, you kind of multiply the amount of bedrooms, the bathrooms, or actually we add them up. And that helps us with our starting point of how long it's going to take to do a deep cleaning. Okay, so that's some math for you guys there. So like I was saying, like four bed, four bath, eight man hours, five bed, five bath, 10. So if you're pricing out a one bedroom, one bathroom, you know that if you're doing the windows and the baseboards, which we include, then it's gonna take you about three hours to complete with no extras. So then you would say, okay, three hours of my time. And for the sake of math, we're just gonna say you decided to charge $50 an hour because that's the going rate in your area. So three hours in this home, it should be about $150 is clean. So again, we're going to take the amount of time that it's estimated to clean and we're going to multiply it by our billable rate or our hourly rate. So with a two bed, two bathroom, deep cleaning or move out, it's for, for us, it's the same across the board. It would typically take four man hours at $50 an hour. That's a $200 job. Now, once we start talking about extras, this is where the extra amount of time comes in. And again, it still kind of breaks down to how long it's gonna take your billable rate. So for us in larger homes, if they have a finished basement, we rule of thumb, we add on an extra man hour. If it's the inside of the refrigerator that they're looking to do, we add on one man hour. If you guys have ever cleaned refrigerators and or freezers, you know that taking them apart can be uh, painstaking and really getting them clean can take you know anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half so give yourself that room the inside of an oven we also uh, quote that at about one man hour because it can easily take an hour to clean an oven even if you spray it and leave it for a decent amount of time you will have to put in some elbow grease sometimes now by rule of thumb kitchens usually take about an hour with one person bedrooms or common rooms which are living rooms and dining rooms usually take anywhere at starting at about 30 minutes right because you could be going into an apartment and it's less than 300 square feet but then you can go into a home and somebody's living room can be the size of your apartment if you get what i'm saying so again these are like starting points and another thing that we do when it comes to pricing is we pull up addresses so when we're on the phone with our clients we ask them for the address and 85% of the time they have no issue providing that. Nowadays, you can put an address into Google and you can pull up information, photos, square footage, everything on Zillow, Redfin, or any of those other realtor platforms. So while we're on the phone with the client, we're actually pulling the house up to verify that the information that they're giving us is correct. And the reason why I really love to do this, you guys, is because homeowners love to leave information out or they love to consider their offices or playrooms. Actually, they don't consider them at all most of the time. So what I like to ask is actually a number of different questions. And I'm gonna get into that just a little bit further into this video because I do wanna get back on track with the pricing. So with the pricing, in a nutshell, it all breaks down to how long do you anticipate a clean to take? What is your billable rate? And are there any extras? Now we're gonna talk about flat rate and hourly billing. So I, you know, I talk to a lot of cleaning business owners from all over the country, all over the world actually, and we all do things differently and that's totally understandable and respectable. What works for me might not work for you. What works for you might not work for me. And you know, that's, that goes with everybody pretty much. So us personally, we charge jobs by the hour. So we do our absolute best to gather as much information as possible to quote as accurately as, as we can. And for the most part, I want to say not to toot my own horn, but we are pretty freaking close to our clean times when we quote our clients, right? 
if for any reason we do need more time it's because something that we didn't anticipate meaning like the dirt level somebody has five dogs the place hasn't had been cleaned in years etc but outside of that my estimations on clean times are pretty accurate unless there's some outside things going on to make that time cleaning go up so pretty much you know we go through all the questions which we'll be talking about and I have my clean times that I shared with you guys, you know, a couple minutes back and I will let the client know, okay, so typically for a home your size and I do use quoting software, which I will link down below if you guys are interested to learn a little bit more. The quote will pretty much say, this is how many man hours your job is going to take. So your home is going to take four man hours at $50 an hour and it's gonna be $200. So number one, we also have a minimum, which we'll talk about, but our minimum is four hours. So we don't come out for any types of jobs for less than four hours. Your minimum can actually be anything you wanna make it. It could be two hours, which means at $50 an hour, you won't come out for anything less than a hundred bucks. It could be three hours at $50 an hour, for example, nothing less than 150, it's totally up to you. Our minimum right now at the stage of our business is four man hours. So if for any reason, we show up to go do a job and we quote you for four hours, but it only takes three, right? We're still gonna charge you for those four hours because that is just the smallest amount of money that we'll come out to do. And again, you can decide on your minimum. It can be anything that you feel comfortable with and you can always change that. So for another example, let's say we quote a client six man hours for their job and it only takes five. Well, they only get charged with five if it takes five and a half, then they only get charged five and a half, but we never charge them more than what it actually takes aside from our minimum of four hours. So it can work in the favor of the client sometimes also, cause I'll be like, hey, it's a six hour job. It was only five. You're only gonna get charged the five man hours. So that's one way that you can price your client that you can let them know like, look, this is what it should take for a home your size. If we get there, and we realize that more time is needed, you know, we'll call you right away. If we figure that we need more time during the clean, because things do happen, right? A house might look spectacularly clean, and then you get into that one bathroom, and it's like, holy hell, right? Or you get into that one bedroom where you have to like literally scrub everything, or maybe like I said, there might be pet dander, who knows? So what we say is, this is the estimated amount of hours. If for any reason, when we first arrive, we'll let you know immediately. But if we do learn later on in the clean that we're gonna need more time, then we will give you a call one hour prior to the clean time ending. Meaning, if we quoted you for four hours and we started at 9 a.m., we're gonna give you a call at 12 p.m. One hour before your clean time is going to come to an end that we agreed upon and I'll let you know. So we'll have someone from the office give a call and say, hey, Miss Arellano, so the team's at your house. They have an hour left that was quoted. However, they did let me know that they are going to need an additional 30 minutes to an hour to complete the first floor. Now, do you approve that time? If they don't approve the time, which for the most part, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, please go ahead, take the extra time. I know, not a problem. But if they don't approve the time, then you can say, okay, not a problem. What would you like my team to focus on within the next 60 minutes? Would you like us to just work on the kitchen? Do you want us to leave the bedrooms alone? And they will tell you, they'll say, you know what? Actually, just have them do the kitchen, forget the bedrooms, blah, blah, blah. And they'll be fine with that. Now, the reason why we started to price like that was because in the very beginning, we didn't know our clean times. We weren't accurate. You know, we didn't have the experience, honestly. So we were losing a lot of money. I would go ahead and quote a job, let's just say $250, thinking that my sister and myself could complete it in, you know, two and a half hours together. And then we'd spend a whole eight hours in a home. So that really started to cut into our profits. And I soon realized, you know, this is not for us. So we do charge by the hour with a four hour minimum and we have plenty of clients. <laughs> we are doing just fine. Now, if you are uncomfortable with that method, you can certainly quote a flat rate. When doing so, you don't give yourself the room for charging more. So if you say this clean is going to take in your head four man hours and you quote the customer $200 flat rate for the job, you're quoting it at $200 because you know that you're anticipating four hours of $50 and it takes five hours you're not gonna get paid for that fifth hour, which might not be that bad, right? Okay, one hour, not so bad. But now if that clean is a clean from hell, it can turn into a situation where you're not even profiting 
or not even breaking even. But you can do very well like that. I know plenty of cleaning business owners that do quote flat rates and they are spot on with their timing or if they do take a little bit of a loss, it's nothing major. But yeah, so you can quote flat rates, but just do know that at the end of the day, any type of quoting for cleaning does come down to how long is it going to take and how much am I charging per hour? That is how you quote cleaning jobs in residential. Again, we are in the state of New Jersey right now, we charge $60 a man hour per person. Some of you might be like, oh my God, that's so much money. And a lot of you are gonna be like, oh my God, you're not charging enough. I know this because I talk to a lot of cleaning business owners that are at 75 or $80 a man hour. Personally, in my area, I just cannot price that high. I will go out of business. So I am comfortable right now at charging $60 a man hour per person for my jobs. Again, we play our cleaners very well. We use, you know, the best equipment. If you saw our stuff, we use name brand products, everybody's background checked. We're definitely worth, you know, the $60. We're probably we're even worth the 75, but I'm just not comfortable pricing that much just yet for my area. So again, you guys, it's always going to break down to how long do I think this is going to take? How much am I charging per hour? And then how am I going to present this to my client? you can do flat rate you can do hourly rate try what works for you again i don't get a lot of pushback from my clients because i say this is my policy it is you know a house your size usually takes this long normally if it takes anything longer it's going to cost more do you agree yes or no i have them sign off i take their deposit and we go about our merry way and hopefully don't run in, into any issues such as you know additional clean times and stuff like that but people do understand you know you might not be able to see someone's home you know we don't do in-person walkthroughs we literally gather as much information as possible and i'm actually going to get into that right now so i can kind of wrap this video up so let's talk about questions that you should be asking your residential clients while you're on the phone so i've came up with a list of questions because you know i learned from my mistakes like shoot i didn't ask that I didn't ask if they wanted the basement included. I didn't ask if they had any additional offices that they didn't include when talking about bedrooms. So I started to implement these questions for anyone that answers the phone for us pretty much. I feel like the more that you know going into a clean, the more information that you have, the better, right? Because you're going to be able to quote more precisely. So on the phone, I always say, you know, or have someone say, hi, thank you for calling spotless cleaning service. How can we help you today? And they usually say, oh, I'm looking for a deep clean or a move in, move out clean or a post construction clean. And I get that info. So I always ask, can we please have your first name and last name? Can you please provide us with an email address so that we can send your quotation to? That's also another way to market to them later on, but <laughs> that's not what we're talking about. What is the home's physical address, right? That's like my fourth question because immediately we're pulling it up on Zillow or on Redfin. What type of cleaning are you looking to be quoted on, right? And this is so important because our clients don't know what type of clean they're looking for because they don't have a cleaning business. So a deep clean for them might mean a move in, move out, or it might mean post construction, which by the way, before I forget, so we're at $60 a man hour for deep cleaning, move in, move out cleaning, regular type of cleaning. Post construction cleaning, we charge $70 a man hour. So we're only $10 more for post construction because it is very tedious and you have to have the right equipment. So what type of cleaning are you looking for? Is it deep cleaning, post construction, move in, move out, commercial cleaning, carpets, air ducts, you know, whatever services that you guys provide, be sure to reiterate the types of cleans to them because they might not know what they need. And then you want to ask, do you currently reside in the home? If no, this is considered a move in, move out or post construction cleaning. It's really important to ask that question because again, people don't know that they need a move in or move out clean or a post construction clean. So if somebody's not living there, that's gonna give you the green light that it's somebody moving in, moving out, and or they might've had just construction done and they're moving in or moving out. Then we ask, have you recently had any renovations or construction done in the home within the last two months? If yes, ask if there has any post-construction dust left over because people, again, love to leave out the details so that they get some kind of deal, right? It's shady, but it happens and you need to just ask the right question. So make it clear that if you arrive and there is post-construction dust, the hourly rate will change because they'll say, oh yeah, we did have construction done, but it was three months ago and it's, it's really clean. And then you get there and there's still a layer of 
of dust from the construction. So let that be known while you're on the phone. How many bedrooms do you have? How many offices do you have? Because again, people don't like to consider those. How many bathrooms do you have? Would you like to include the inside of the oven? Would you like to include the inside of the refrigerator? Would you like to include the outside of the cabinets? Now, I asked that question because that's an extra in our cleaning. And that's an extra because we've you know, had situations where it could take an hour sometimes to clean the outside of someone's cabinets. Not everybody takes care of their kitchens like you do or I. So, you know, do you want to include the outside of the cabinets? Do you want to include the top of the cabinets if there is that space? Do you have any pets? Do you have a finished basement that you would like to include? Now, these are all very important because these items will add more time onto the clean, right? So if it's a post-construction clean, you know you're going to charge more. You might find out that they have offices that they didn't include and in that when they gave you the bedroom number. Some people might think that the inside of the oven and refrigerator is included, and it's not. Those are extras. You want to ask about the front and the top of the kitchen cabinets because people might assume that that is included, and it's not. Do you have any pets? Pet dander and hair will cause the clean time to increase. And the more pets that they have, the longer it's going to take to clean up that hair. Believe me. Okay. And of course you have a finished basement that you would like to include if it's a home, because you don't know, people might just assume, Oh, well you, you quoted me for the whole house cleaning. Like you have to do the basement and you want to avoid any type of conflict. So I always ask these questions or have somebody from my office ask these questions because it makes the client accountable because they're giving you the answers to these questions and it helps you understand better what to expect. I also, you know, I always ask for the physical address because I do love to pull it up on Zillow like I explained to you guys, just because people will leave information out. They'll tell you it's three bedrooms, but it's four. They'll tell you it's four bathrooms, but, but it pops up seven. And then that's when you can say, Oh, hi. You know, I have a question. So I just pulled it up on the internet and it actually says that you have five bathrooms, not three. Do you know why that is? And they might have a valid explanation. They might say, well, this home was converted into two apartments. So the basement, which you're not going to be cleaning, has X amount of bedrooms and bathrooms. And you can say, oh, okay, thank you so much for the clarification. You know, you don't want to make the client feel like they're lying or they're wrong, but you can ask politely why the information they're giving you and the information on the internet is not matching up. So I'm really hoping that this was very useful or helpful for you guys when it comes to pricing out some of your cleanings. Now, again, you might start off with your hourly rate or your billable rate a little bit lower in the beginning because you want to take the experience and you want to learn the cleans and that is completely fine. That's something that we did, but eventually you're going to have to increase to be able to be profitable and scale your business. And you can do that. It's okay. People raise their prices all the time. I mean, it just happens and you know, I'll have a whole nother video on that and how to approach that situation should it happen. But if you guys are interested in receiving some of the checklists for these types of cleanings, which we provide, which are deep clean, move in, move out, post construction, make sure to click the link down below in this video. I'll have it in the description. You guys can shoot me over your email address on the link down below and I'll help provide or I will provide you with the different checklists that we have. And just know that when you do see these checklists, you should also be sharing these with your clients, right? That when we quote, we share the checklist because I never want a client to tell me that they thought their walls were included when they weren't or the garage was included when it's not. So in the checklist that I'll be providing, it'll actually have a breakdown of what's included per type of clean for each and every room. It also doubles as a checklist for yourself and your team. So I put it in order. So the checklist is an actual order of which you and your team should clean to be efficient and effective. So you can provide these to your clients so they know what to expect and what's extra. And you can provide these to your employees to tell them this is what has to get cleaned and in exactly this order because it makes sense. So I hope this video was super helpful for you guys in regards to residential cleaning pricing. I will be dropping another video all about commercial cleaning and how to price. So make sure to hit like, subscribe, and you know, give me a follow. I'm here for you guys. This is Carolyn Arellano, your cleaning business mentor.